Hallelujah. Pray this morning that God will open your eyes of understanding to see what He's saying to you. So you believe and become what God is saying. Let me begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Just ask God to open your eyes of understanding this morning. Can you pray? Father, we trust you this morning. Our eyes will be opened. Our eyes will be opened. Our eyes will be opened to what you are saying to us. Our eyes will be opened to your plans and purposes in the name of Jesus. We ask that our eyes will be opened. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, our eyes will be opened. Our eyes will be opened by your mercy. We will hear you, O oh God. We will hear you clearly, without distortion in any form. In the name of Jesus. We will hear you clearly, Almighty oh, God. In the name of Jesus. Father, we will trust, O oh God, that our hearts will receive your word clearly in the name of Jesus. Prato Sepika de Bosch, Brenda Balagarabas, Brando Sotida Badi Yadosh, E Toko to Zeta Badi Yadesh. Father, we thank you. Our Father will exalt you. In Jesus' name we are prayed. Let's have our seat. Good morning. And how's been your week? I said, how's been your week? All right, give me Joshua 1 8 on the screen very quickly this morning. Joshua 1 8 on the screen. Now, if you're a parent here, you have your children in church, you are going to need to wait three hours today. You know, normally today we were supposed to do our normal school of destiny. I mean, but we're not doing that today. Our children, they're having their children's day for next week. That means children church is having their top next week. And they need to do one or two things. So you have to wait for them. So every parent should also see me after service. We are waiting compulsory. The door is very close. If you are very hungry, order your food at the door. Your baby is one year old or one month old. You are waiting. Glory to Jesus. You are not saying hallelujah very well. Though. Parents, shout hallelujah. Parents, smile and look at my face and shout hallelujah. Daddy, praise, shout hallelujah. Daddy, praise, shout hallelujah. That hallelujah is it from your heart or your soul? Somewhere there. All right. So Joshua 1 8. This book of the Lord shall not depart out of your mouth, for it shall be taken therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then shall thou make thy way prosperous, and, uh, and then have good success. Give me an NKJV, please. Give me an NKJV. This. I don't want to do KJV today. Give me NKJV, please. All right. Which my servants can? Which servants? Give me verse 8, not verse 1. All right. This book of the Lord shall not depart from your mouth, but it shall be taken in it day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you have good success. Shagu Sussex. Shagu Sussex. Now, the first thing you will see here is that Bible, God is saying to Joshua. Now, remember that Joshua is a warrior. And Joshua's leadership and Moses' leadership are not the same thing. So, Joshua, I mean, Moses did not fight a battle with a sword. It was just the rod that God gave to Moses. And by that rod, you know, there are many challenges that they overcame and many outcomes that were very powerful in their life. Hallelujah. Let me call Pastor Denu and our people to come inside this church. They said what they are doing is very, very important. I have told them what to do. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. All right. So, we see that by the time God brought up Joshua, Joshua will be fighting battles. Now, God is saying that the success of Joshua will not just be because of skillfulness. Now, God is not replacing skill. Are you with me? That means that skill is still very important. Are you with me? It's been a skillful soldier. It's very important. But God doesn't say that there will be a major success because of the fact that he pays attention to what is written in the book of the law. Now, this meditate day and night. Day and night is a picture of routine. Shout routine. Talk to me now. Shout routine. Routine implies an habit. Now, that means that the habit of staying with the written scripture, I mean, with the written word, you know, little religion law, day and night, is the product of success. Are you with me? Are you with me? So this one I want to share with us, a pastor that will help everybody. I want to really open to it. It's a very simple message. 
But that's what God put in my hand to share with us. And I pray that many of us really need it. Because so many people desire to see success and they do not see it. Desire is not enough. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good morning. Are we here together? There are people that want to see success, who want to see certain changes in their life, but they do not see it. And why they don't see is that there are things that people don't pay attention to. There are many, but I want to talk about one of them this morning. So can you just title this Good Success Keys to Cultivating Destiny Habits? Hallelujah. See after me, Good Success. And I can put a colon there, and I can now write Keys to Cultivating Destiny Habits. Now, I'll be talking about habits from a biblical perspective. There are psychological perspective. You study psychology, it's what they call habits. Are you with me? That leads to success. And the people hear habit, usually people think about negative habits. Now, we're not talking about negative habits in this place. If I have my belief is that by the end of this message, by this week, you need to go and sit down, evaluate your life, and begin to see how you have to replace negative habits with healthy habits. Are we together? Are you hearing me carefully? So it's very, very important. Now, habit is so important, and habit has to do with routine. Now, there's a quote I wrote many years ago. But I don't remember the person that wrote the quote. I don't read it to us. The quote says, plant a word in the mind and you reap an act. A-C-T. Plant a word, W-O-R-D. In the mind, you will reap an act. That means what is planted in the mind as a word becomes a thought pattern that will lead to actions. Is that clear? That will lead to actions. Now say, plant the act or the action. You will reap a habit. That means action produces habit. It says that at the plan the habit, you will reap a character. Plan the character, you will reap a nature. Plan the nature and you will reap a destiny. So you see that flow. But what is important is that until you have an habit, you can go to the next three layers, which is talk about character, nature, and destiny. So habit is very important. And from dictionary, I want to just make it a bit simple. Um, one of the dictionaries, the Cambridge dictionary says that. A habit has to do with something that you do often and regularly, sometimes without knowing that you are doing it. That's from Cambridge Dictionary. From Wikipedia, Wikipedia says a habit is a routine of behavior that is repeated regularly and tends to occur subconsciously. They say the same thing. And then from Longman Dictionary, it says that a habit is something that you do regularly or usually. So you see the word regularly, you see the word, you know, continuously, you know, you see the word routine. You see the word that's to do with usually. That'd be something that happens as a routine. Hallelujah. For example, now, our eating pattern is a routine. That means that we all eat almost every day. We are not fasting. Are you with me? So eating is a routine. No one by routine. That's a routine. Hallelujah. The brushing of your teeth in the morning is a routine. Some people take their bath some days, but they brush their teeth. True or true? They are not talking to me. True or true? Or because I'm speaking about you, you do that. Sometimes you don't take a bath, but you brush your teeth. Hallelujah. So that's a routine. Brushing your teeth is a routine. That's something we do almost every day. True or true now? You're not responding to me, oh. Are you following me carefully? So, now, that is so, in a sense, the brushing of your teeth has become an habit. How many of us have failed somehow that have not brushed your teeth in the morning? If you don't feel somehow, God is your strength. I mean, have, I mean, have slept and you woke up, and the next thing, as you were speaking with somebody, you feel that an odor is coming out. You excuse yourself, I want to brush your teeth. You know, for example, now, if you fast regularly, I don't brush your teeth more than one time in a day. We're using aroma that is not okay into the environment. So when you fast, you are meant to brush more than once in a day. Hallelujah. Stop looking at me and see what I'm talking about is not true. Amen. I have been somewhere that somebody is talking with you and you are moving backward. You are creating a gap. Have you done that before? Because something is oozing from the mouth of the person. Be sincere. You don't want to tell the person that your mouth is smelling. <laughs> so just drop back a bit. And I know it's funny if the person is not aware and it's drawing closer. <laughs> Amen. May God help us in Jesus' name. All right. I just remember something very funny now. There was a time for me, Jebo Day, to my door. Now we we're, were cutting, so I went to see my, now my wife, so I went to see her. So I was coming back. I had this bus of Jebo Day. 
Now this man and, and his wife were drunk in the, in the bus. I think I was sitting by the window side. Each of them vomited <laughs> in the bus. They vomited. They were sitting at the back. <laughs> and we are you know, taking off. We are going so far. They could not stop. People were just cursing them. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's very funny. Ah, I had to open the window. And my head was out. <laughs> and if you know me very well, I didn't get irritated, so you can imagine. Ah, I was also there to go to my dog. It was a very terrible, terrible experience. And no, but later I felt for those guys because you no, know, they were elderly people. I mean, vomiting the car. They were drunk. Drunk. They came for your party for me, my dog, in the whole day. <sighs> a life without Christ is a pity. It is well in Jesus' name. In case you are here this morning, you are not born again, you are addicted to drinking. May the mercy of God bear you out. This morning, you need to give a life to Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen and amen and amen. All right, so, in a sense, to look at the Webster's dictionary, it says the same thing, but also called it an addiction. It said what the other people have said, but also called it at what? Addiction. It said any action that you perform regularly as part of your routine can be called a habit a settled tendency or usual manner of behavior is an habit an acquired mode of behavior if it is acquired mode of behavior that has become nearly completely involuntary you know for example now i think i still do it once in a while not as before when we're caught him i will say Pam, stop it ah, so I'm like, what is it so you're biting your nails <laughs> amen Okay, I, I was like, okay, I, I will stop it. Next time, stop it. What is it? You are biting your nails. There was a point that biting your nails was a major fight. You don't not fight like that, but a point of discussion <laughs> in the courtship. <laughs> Amen. I was not aware that I was biting my nails until I was in courtship. I have been biting my nails all along. <laughs> Without, no. So sometimes, you know, when I, as I put my hand to my mouth, I just remember, stop it. You are biting your nails. <laughs> Amen. So that's it. So that's like an habit that's become involuntary. Do we get that? Become what? Involuntary. And some of us have such you know, habits in our lives that are not okay. And God will help us in the name of Jesus. I said, God help us in the name of Jesus. What we're cutting was when I would throw, okay, maybe we're in the bus together and we're going out and I eat something that has a wrap, maybe a biscuit, and I'll throw it from the window. And then the pharmacist will say, You are destroying the environment. <laughs> <laughs> amen, amen, amen. So when we go out together, you eat biscuits, she put the waste in her bag. You take pure water, put the waste in her bag. You buy chin chin, put this in her bag. Ah, my poor girl, I've married the Fitoto. You know what you say? I've met her one chance. So sometimes we are going, I'll just drop the thing. Ah, she will say, You are constantly to be dirty. She will pick it up. My poor girl. Now, wow. You can imagine. So that courtship was. <laughs> <laughs> Very interesting. So she will carry everything in her bag. When she doesn't say a dustbin, she will not put everything and put it in the dustbin. Wow. Awesome person. <laughs> but you know, I didn't know that I had the habit of throwing things like that until that time. Hallelujah. Okay. Glory to Jesus. So let's look at Luke 4. Luke 4, verse 16. I'm going somewhere. I want us to try and listen very well. Now, what I want to share is very important, though. It's, it's, it's such that if you get this, every area of your life will become better. Marriage, career, your work with God, which everything flows from, because you have one life, will become better. So I want us to really get this. It's simple, but I want us to get it. And I'm glad there are people that need to listen to this this morning. Now, if we have discussed anything before, don't think I'm on your case. <laughs> you know, that's one of you, you pastor. When I come for counseling, or somebody, and actually a message, but, ah, today, it is what the pastor is preaching about. What I want to teach today is not this. So I'm not on your case. But there are people we have discussed, your case is in this. So I'm really telling you. So your case is in this. And it's in it for good. So will you bless me with an offering after this message? <laughs> not with hard face. Glory to Jesus. I mean, you still love me so much after this message. I will try my best that you still love me. So I will receive pleasantly. So look for 16. 
So he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. As his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day, on Sabbath day and stood up to read. Now, what I'm saying is the word custom. That word custom is a Greek word that also has a respect about habit. So even Jesus, our master, had an habit. Or even habits plural, because if you check his life, you see a lot of habits there. That this one of them that has a custom of going to the temple and to read. And this happens almost all Sabbaths. Are we together at all? Because if you just read that place, I just read the Red Book of Isaiah, it was like that. There was something there, as his custom was. Do we get this point? So, so I want to say that because some people say, we can find, can find it in Jesus. That Jesus has a lifestyle of healthy habits. And those habits help his destiny. Now, if you check Mark 135, look at Mark 135 very quickly. Please, Mark 135 very quickly. Are we there? I, plan to, I want to be fast as I, I'm already doing for mine. Now, in the morning, having risen long while before daylight, he went out and departed to sleep prayed, and there he prayed. You see a lot of scripture that this is the fact that Jesus has a prayer habit. Hello? Hello? You see a lot of scripture that affirms to this about Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give me Luke 442. Luke 442. Very quickly, please try and be fast. Press on the projector. Now, when it was day, he departed and went to a deserted place. And the crowd sought him and came to him and tried to keep him from leaving them. But now, where he went to was the place where he went to pray. Are you with me? Are you with me? Are you with me? Luke 516, please. Luke 516. Let me see whether I can do this on my own because. Luke 5, 16. Okay, so we do yourself often. Shout often. Now, that's the word for regular. For what? And in wilderness and prayed. So you see that Jesus had, we have not about his custom to go to the temple or the Sabbath to read. And this was another one talking about praying. Are we together? Talking about praying. And you can see that in several other scriptures, you know, that said Jesus did this often. Now, you see also in 6, 12. Luke 6, 12. Luke 6, 12. All right. It came to pass in those days that he went out into a mountain to do what? Pray. To do what? And they continued all night in prayer. All night in prayer to God. So we see that Jesus' life, there were days that he would spend, he would go out early to pray. Sometimes he would do all night prayer. There's some other scriptures so shows us that he actually also prayed in the day. So meaning that early in the morning, in the day, the afternoon, in the night, Jesus prayed. Do we get this point? Jesus prayed. Now, Daniel chapter 6. Daniel chapter 6. I want to just see that, okay, in scriptures, you find that Jesus adds a routine, adds routine in his life. Hallelujah. Of which prayer is one of them, of which is going to the, to the temple in the Sabbath to read scriptures is one of them. Now, Daniel, Daniel 6. I think it should be 610, please. 610. Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went home in his upper room with his windows open toward Jerusalem. He knelt down on his knees three times that day, prayed and gave thanks before God, before his God, as was his custom. As was his custom. As was his custom since his early days. Now, Daniel says when you have conspiracy against Daniel, people are the conspiracy against Daniel, they look at his life. Looking for something wrong, they could not find anything wrong. But they said that they can find something against him by virtue of his lifestyle, which has to do with his work with God. That this guy, he noticed that. So, meaning that in this case of Daniel, people knew that he prays. Are we together? So, they went to say, be the king, that let's have this. I mean, they had the plot. The king was not aware of the plot. That nobody should pray to any god except to the king for 30 days. And King was, you know, lured into that. That's what happens sometimes that people can lure you into what you don't know what they have. They have a plan against Daniel. King was not aware. So they lured the king into that plan and they made a law that could not be changed. Now, after they have signed that law, so what I'm saying there, after they have put that law into writing, God, I mean, Daniel still went to pray as he has been doing before. Amen. So I want us to know that. That is an example in those other that you see that. He had that. So, part of his life is that he prays. 
That you study Daniel chapter 9, you see that you also study the scriptures. You see that as a lifestyle, Daniel. Are you with me? And I think it's very important. So the point is this that if you study so many scriptures or most, you see that the majority of them, there is a lifestyle they have, a kind of routine that affected and impacted their life. Now, most people today don't understand the power of routine, which has to do with the power of habits and relation to destiny. So this morning I'm speaking about this area. Trust in God for all of us. Hallelujah. Just work on this time out because I've not seen the time. I'll just continue. It's not my fault, but I'll just continue. I was, I was trying to look for the time now, and I cannot find the time there. Hallelujah to Jesus, though. So when we are done, we are done. Glory to Jesus. Amen and amen. So, so it's important that we know that there's a place of habits which impact our destiny. And most people don't know that what you do in day to day affects you. It affects you. And that's why one of the people that they call great minds, you know, in church, I mean, not necessarily church history, in the history of the earth, because he's not uh, a believer. But what is said is true with scripture. There are things that people will say psychology that is not in line with scriptures. Something they will say is in line with scripture. And that's Aristotle. You know, you hear this word that we are, how should I put it now? We become what we repeatedly do. I've never heard that before. Now, it's a quote by Aristotle, actually. People say, teacher, say it everywhere. Tell them what we become, what we repeatedly do. Don't come and give me time. God oh, bless you, Jesus' name. I write in paper and do like this. I will see it. Amen and amen. Since your neighbor will become what we repeatedly do. Now, if you get this one, it will affect every part of our life, even to the issue of living by righteousness as a conduct and many, many other things. So, now there are many principles, many um, psychological expressions, many studies on habits that's been done, many things that have been done on the of habits. And some are not scriptural. And some people still get the wrong result. So I want to show us a few of them that is not the common ones. For example, they will tell you, you do something for 21 days, you become an habit. Is that not true? Is that not true? Is that not true? All right, you have been fasting 21 days now. <laughs> you are all laughing. Has it become an habit for some of you? Some of you are very happy. After the 21st day, that pastor, we have escaped. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If I announce now that by God's grace, next week I want us to go on a seven days water only fast. And if you don't fast, don't come to church on Sunday. So people don't come to church on Sunday because they will not fast. They will not fast. So my point is that that statement is not completely true. Is that what? If you are somebody like me, go and try it out. It's not completely true. Hallelujah. That means that in the cases that people do something for 21 days and it stays with them, but it's not completely true. Is that what? But when it comes to a healthy habit, you know, imagine me going on food only for 21 days. You know, when you come back on the 22nd day, you are thanking God that Lord is not going to take what's in now, at least. So it's not completely true that what you do for 21 days becomes an habit. Do you get me? Do you get me? But there are cases that it's actually like that. But you see people say that a lot and reinforce it. But it's not completely true. Now, a heart is not an habit until it is repeated. So, habit, in fact, somebody call it repeated practice. What do I call it? You know, when you get to an habit, it starts consciously. Then it becomes part of you unconsciously. Do we get that? Do we get that? So, the person wants to learn how to play the drum. The coordination of his hand and his legs and his mind with the drum has to be activated to be able to play the drum properly. So, person keep learning and playing. So, at the beginning, it will not be that easy. Then, by the time it's becoming a bit good, you will still be conscious of the movement of the hands and the leg. But someone like Allah Midden now has been playing for a very long time. He's no longer conscious of it. It's not become, it's, it's on, if it's on the drum, it's just natural to just flow. But that happened by repeated what? Talk to me now. Repeated what? Practice. Do we get that? Is that clear to us? That us really understand that. So, it's now a successful drama, drama because of repeated practice. Do you get that? So, that will show a scriptural expression to what I believe works. When I say works, I mean it works better and lasts better. So, what I'm going to give us is psychology. Hello? 
That means I can teach this by teaching you psychology. Are you with me? I can teach psychology. You know, if you can conceive it, you achieve it. Yes, now. But men have conceived it and they have not achieved it. And these people have conceived and never achieved. You have not seen. Apostle John. You have not seen. Ah. I've seen, though. I've seen. And then, you know, people have also have habits that will not necessarily take them to their destination. Are you with me? Start to look at scriptures and see how to properly unless someone called habit. Are you with me? Are you with me? So the first one I would like to talk about is the last one in my notes. It's what I call progress gap and habit formation. I'm just using that to just capture what I want to say. Progress gap and habit formation. Hey, glory to Jesus. <laughs> Sharp progress gap. An habit formation. All right. Let me try and see. Um, okay. Now, the, the principle here from Scott is that uh, you will discover that there's this issue of when people do not achieve success on time from a particular decision, people give up. That means we make a decision, let's say for example now, to be tightened. And they told you, have you tight? This is the result of tightening. I have been tightening six months. You cannot see the result of tightening. This tight itself is really, is really God. Do you get the kind of a thing? People give up. People give up. People give up. And that's one of the apples to a lot of people. That means that you are, you are expecting a particular level of progress, but you are not seeing the progress. So not seeing the progress cause people's heart to become weary. Has that happened to anybody here? And you can see that that is biblical. But let me just read this short and then I will, I, will, I will give you an answer to that. Galatians 6, verse 9. Let us be weary in well doing, for in due season we shall reap. If we do what? If we do what? If we faint not, or don't lose the heart. Or don't lose that. So, what happened is this. I want us to get this very well. Is that. You should understand what we call cumulative effect. What do I call it? Now, cumulative effect means that whatever you are doing on a consistent basis, are you following me carefully? Has the cumulative effect over time. Because man is living in the realm of time. Your body is in the realm of time. Your spirit has relationship with eternity because you are not in Christ. Are you with me? We are living in the realm of time. So if you make a bad decision and stay with it over time, you have a negative result for that bad decision because of what we call cumulative effect. Are you with me? The same thing when you make a good decision. You know, that small thing that you think that's not significant is very significant when you have it as cumulative effect over time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, if you put water on your cooking equipment and you start to eat the water, will it become, will it become warm immediately? Gradually, what happens is warm, like I can put your hand inside it. Then, at a point, it's going to be hot. If you put your hand very fast, reflexly, you will pull it out. That also, but it's not yet necessarily boiling. So, if your goal is boiling, what happens? It has to stay until it boils. Now, the point of boil is called the tipping point. So, most people don't understand that your small decision has moments and momentum. That will be manifested in due season. Are you with me? In due what? Now, if I decide now that I want to work on my middle kingdom, which is my stomach, glory to Jesus, to be very flat as it used to be in those days, but not with the same shape, glory to Jesus. That means I'm not, not as lean as I used to be. Amen? Amen. You know, when I was like that, they call me faster. Now nah, I'm still fasting, but it is not going. It says it's late night eating. So I've given you a kind of theory to eat. Well, we shall do see what we can do about it. I've seen one exercise that can help my life. Glory to Jesus. But my point is this. There will be a tipping point that the thing will go down. So what people don't endure is that they don't endure to the tipping point. So people have a small that they have made, they have, they have spoken to you, have told you things in, in scriptures, if you practice this, 
this will eventually happen. Then you practice it for one year. You do not see the result you are expecting. Then you give up. So, you should understand that there is always a tipping point and cumulative effect that happens over, over, over time. So you don't give up because of what? You don't see results very fast. Is that clear? So if you are somebody who's looking for fast results, you cannot develop and cultivate Christ-like habits that will help your future. Are you with me? Are you with me? For example, now, people have shared with you how they started to pray and God begin to do a lot of things in their life because they are praying. If you want to also start praying and decide to happen to you that same day, it's not so. But number one, it's like you are entering an environment for the first time. So God begins to work on you, work on your heart. You know things will happen. That eventually you also see yourself arriving at a state in prayer life that you start having some experience that are meant for the believer in the prayer life. Am I talking to us? Am I talking to us? And this is very, very important. In learning any skill, you have to stay on what you are learning Practice by repetition until you are good at it. If you give up halfway, you'll be half baked. Is that not true? How many of you know that somebody is a medical doctor and he graduated? I mean, he left school at 300 level. I said, Come and operate you. We are allowed the person to operate you. Because 300 level is just MBBS, he's just about to start trading. He has been doing jack of all trade from 100 level to 100 level, 300 level. So, 400 level is when you go to start to go into real, real, more practicals. Are you with me? Are you with me? Because if I'm at that level, there's nothing to do 300 level. Some will fail it and they are sent away from school. Once you fail twice, and you are failing twice, you are no longer a medical student. So you are not qualified to go to the next level that really begin I mean, to put into you training that makes you a real medical doctor. Am I talking to us? Am I talking to us? So some people now, they are not able to stay with a skill because they don't have the endurance to repeat and repeat and learn until they master it. Are you with me? So that people like that, they're not able to stay with a skill. Some in these areas that, you know, they go for just business, you know, they're doing business, they go into fish farm today. In fish farming, by that one year, they've told them that if you do this, if you do this, if you do this, ah, you make this talk of profit. And the guy went to fish farming in the rainy season. The way they built the, <laughs> the fish pond, they didn't do it well. And when rain came, rain first collapsed part of the pond. Are you with me? The next thing some of the fishes, they went to the channels, or gota, the normal labor language. And then the remaining ones are very I mean, So by the time I pass it, like, ah, this man is failing. Okay, wait, what's working is poultry. First, person doesn't realize that the people that are telling him that they were money in fish farm, they've explained their own losses in the past. Some of them learned. That's why they have a lot of technology about building fish ponds now. They're all different kind of technology. They were talking about using tank technology. Now, people are not using tank again. So, you didn't realize that people that were there, that lasted, who are now very productive, there are people that stayed in the game even when they were losing. Are you with me? But they just told you success stories. That you started business five years ago, now I'm a multimillionaire. <laughs> what has that between the first year and the fifth year? They've not told you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, you must have that endurance to be able to understand that you don't quit because the progress is not as you want it to be. You keep at what, you know, you are doing until you see the grand progress. Do you get that? Do you get that? I'll say that one first. I'll say that one first. So, most people, progress gap is the reason why they are not able to continue in a particular experience of an habit. Is that clear? Is that clear? If you apply spiritually, you are a worship team, maybe I've spoken to you, and they started doing something. And then because you have lost some results, or subconsciously, you become weary in staying with the principles we have taught you. And Lord, have mercy on you in the name of Jesus. Repent this morning. Amen? 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 And amen. All right. This one I like to talk about is also very important and has to do with process gap. What do I call it? What do I call it? Though sometimes people focus on what we call what? They create goals 
and they focus on what, 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 and don't focus on how. Or what? Or what? <sighs> what may not take you far, but you don't know how. And the good scripture for that is Ecclesiastes 10 15. 10 15. Book of Ecclesiastes 10 15. It says in my own version here, the labor of the foolish wearied every one of them because he knew it not how to go to the city. I think I'm seeing KJV. I'm seeing KJV. Let me go to another version. Now, the labor of the foolish wearies every one of them because what? He knows not out what? So out what? Now, understand this. He said the labor, short labor. So this person is applying himself or herself. Are we, are, we, are we together? You know, to be able to get to the city. That's what is their goal. But the wisdom to achieve the goal is not there. So many do not know ways, pathways to follow. So some people have an habit form over just hard work, which is not bad. But hard work will not be enough. So see a lot of people, they desire to be blessed financially. And they think that more money is the way to get blessed financially. So it's them changing jobs. Are you with me? So they change jobs. They want higher pay. Even sometimes they are rioting. They are rioting. Government should increase their money. Because people believe that when they increase their money, they will be better. But they increase the money, <laughs> it's not better. They say, and issue another time. Because... The principles that brings financial wealth is not just based on higher any. Are you with me? There can be any I and you are not financially okay. The principles in God's word, are we together? We some people even the word are applying. In God's word, that is critical to being financially buoyant and financially wealthy. If you don't know, you don't know it. So someone that knows it, who's making 100000 per month, would be better than someone who has one million per month who doesn't know it. Are you with me, oh? Are you with me? So sometimes, so you see a lot of people that they have that capacity to change jobs. They leave this job, go to another one, palm. That is high paying. They feel that this job ought to sue me, you know. Then but they are not paying me very well. They are applying for another job. And then they employ them. Again, another high pay. But you see that their financial life is not getting any better. What's the problem? Process gap. Hello? Am I speaking to yours? Am I speaking to us? Give me Isaiah 48. Now, we are children of God. On this matter, there are biblical principles that we can follow. Are you with me? Are you with me? In fact, there's this book, a secular book, titled The Richest Man in Babylon. It's not in Babylon. It's a secular, secular material. You will see that the guy is applying biblical principles. The only thing he didn't put there is tight. Anybody you are teaching in secondary school, you are, whatever job you are doing, you are a organizer, whatever job you are doing, if you understand that principle, you will break forth. Are you with me? Are you with me? That principle, of course, you can also add other principles to you because one, that principle will help you to break forth. If you understand some other people of our certain I, I mean, I pay customers again, you can bring for another level. Am I, I making sense to us? Am I making sense to us? So, we don't know, you don't know. So, and I'm going somewhere, just follow me carefully. I'm going somewhere, follow me carefully. I'd like to talk about, you know, the, 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 the dimension from which an habit flows from is important. So, you don't become richer because of changing jobs and you have higher pay. Are you with me? That's what make you rich. There's a principle that flows from scriptures to financial wealth. And even riches is not, it's not about money alone. You can be rich in a lot of other things. Now, if you don't know that principle, you don't know it. People will tell you how to read 15 books this year. Out of the year, they've not read two books. Because they are gold. People that really read, 
There are principles to reading. Hello? Hello? There are, there are, let me just leave that. Nobody came from heaven with a reading habit. Reading habit is formed. People say, hey, Pastor, I can't not just read. You are just lazy. An excuse is a way to fail or anything. I give an excuse. You are willing to apply yourself and you follow the instruction. You will see that reading is an habit that is formed. And for people that grew up in houses where there are books, they perform it easily. And their parents instructed from their early days to read. It's an habit that is formed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, before we should watch movies, it will be one episode, you watch it, it is done. At most, you do what they call part one, part two, part three. The movie is done. Now, you have what they call dangerous waste, I mean, time wasters. You know, you have movies that are 164 episodes, season one. And you know, God said that it goes to three seasons. Am I talking to us? And people that say that they cannot read book, eh? that they don't have a habit of reading book, that they, they, they easily form the habit of watching those episodes. Hello, oh, is it a lie? Pray three hours. You cannot pray three hours, but you can watch one sixty-four episode. Lord bless you, the name of Jesus. Am I talking to us? So understand that now, how of it is important. How is what? You have to be someone that follows after how of a thing. Habits that generate out of what are not how will not help you to really achieve what you want to achieve. Hello? Hello? Bible talk about the Father in Psalm 103, verse, verse 7 or so, that God made his ways known to Moses. But sure, obviously, they saw their art. But it's the ways that produces what? Their art. So somebody was not living, I was in a meeting. I mean, let me just put this one. Someone that does not know the ways, we see the mighty miracles. But we're not be able to achieve the same thing knowing the ways. I was debating, man was sharing about the fact that we are faith. You know, that all of us have faith now. You know, all of us have faith. Acknowledge it. Things like that. It was sharing powerfully, very powerfully. You know, talk about acknowledge it. And say that this way he's able to communicate his faith more that is giving the results. And the fact that, you know, very powerful message, and I was really blessed. You know, and you know, the fact that the faith in you, faith in me, they're not really different. But the thing is that the same result was yielded. I understand him. And right there, the Holy Ghost came, bam, word of knowledge. Things started to happen. I understand him. Glory to Jesus. But I know the man of God. I do what? I do what? What he has not added to it. Is that he has a lifestyle. He has what? I know when he comes to Canaan land, and he will lock up and pray for eight hours. Hello? And he does it what? Regularly. He does it what? You. You have been doing one season four episode of this movie. Are you with me regularly too? <laughs> Amen? The answer is, you're, you cannot be, you are, you, what, what is working in? There's a regular habit that produces it. Such that he can wake up one morning, he has not prayed. That money, there will still be miracles. Because it's not, the, the prayer life has entered an overflow. Do you understand? Enter what? An overflow. So his tank is not in deficit. For you, you have not prayed six months. You have, you have not, in the last three years of your Christian life, if you put your prayer together, all your prayer life together, everything is three months. Are you with me? Are you with me? You know, recently people had, um, there was this meeting where the man of God shared the fact that there's a book by T.L. Osborne that people should go and read it, blah, 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 blah that they will flow in it. <laughs> it is well in the name of Jesus. But there are two things I know. Or let me, say, let me just say one. I won't say it was that I know. Read the book. Do not apply that one thing? The more you read, the more you be, the more you'll be frustrated. Yes, now because you will read and practice and nothing will happen. Am I talking to us? Am I talking to us? Yeah, I wrote the book. I don't want nothing that he does. 
regularly. Share regularly. That is not in the book. Yeah, back end. Thank you. You can browse, you can shake, click. Hallelujah. 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 So the labor of the fool. So if I have an habit that does not stem from how, what happens? You won't get desired result. Am I making sense to us? You won't get what? You won't get desired result. That's what you see this. It's very important. So people have process gap. Very powerful desires. But how? 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 And that's why we have scriptures. In Isaiah 48 verse... Verse 17, God was talking about the fact that, I mean, it was a prophecy, and as I was saying that, let me, let me just read it. Sorry, 48. Thus said the Lord your Redeemer, the only one of Israel, I'm the Lord your God. Who teaches you what? Who teaches you what? So in God, then you can be taught to profit. Are you with me? Lead you in the way that you should what? Go. So in God, there are truths and realities that for me can stem an habit that will help you. So when Jacob was in the house of Laban, he labored and labored and labored and labored. There was not have any result that you have. Until God showed him a way. And that way worked. Amen. When Laban was paying Joseph, Jacob's salary, it was not rich. When he said Joseph was to collect salary again, it was rich. But did he just say no more salary? He said no more salary from an understanding that came to a vision. Am I talking to us? Am I talking to us? Let me, the simple one can apply it to easily is finances. Because I want to use it to finance, I mean, easily. Listen to me. If you don't have an habit, let me mention two habits that you need to have as habit to pay for financially. It's both tithing and savings. What do I call it? What do I call it? What do I call it again? Let me give you an example. You have a desire to be like an OC distributor or any good, um, let me say, business in the food chain. Maybe people that are selling rice want to be a distributor. And but let, me say, go to, let me go to some drinks like, like Coca Cola and the rest. And Coca Cola comes into some good. I mean, let's say they come to our church now. I said they need a distributor. That means that in Ota, that person will be the one that will represent them. In Ota, want to buy Coke in Ota, roll of Ota, talk about Ota. Coke will say they are not coming again. You go to be that distributor. And they're asking that they need you to invest 10 million. Hello? Once you don't have 10 million, you are disqualified. True or true? True or true? But someone has been saving. Why is it that Titan that helps you to enter a level of financial increase that is beyond your salary or your just normal earnings? That I added Titan to it. Amen. I'm not going to that. I don't teach about money in that area. But we want to teach about it. But you must understand that. So, people have seen people like that and not to happen. And you know what? I know somebody that wants to borrow money for such a business. Investing their 600000 to do that business. Borrow the money. They enter debt to that business. You know why? Do you know why? It's like putting a song. The mindset or the wisdom that manages finance is not there. So getting that money, getting the product, before what was happening, they'll be spending their profits. Hello? They'll be spending what? Their profits. So they will not enlarge. It will end up in losses eventually. And I love people like that. Because normally, if you start with 700,000, you should be hoping that you will double the, I mean, the capital by yourself. That you be able to move from 700,000 to 1.2 million. And then you should be also have a plan that will take you to 1.8 million. Meaning that, because the more you double your capital, the more also you are going to have volume sales. Am I talking to us? But do you know how to go from 700,000 to 1.2 million? Amen. So many people don't know how to manage money. That's the truth. Even I say savings, I've not said anything because I've not thought on it. But when I say savings, because there are people that they will save. And then there's edicts with somebody who's admitted in an hospital that they will the money from the savings and it's gone. The pastor should not do that. He doesn't teach about savings. You understand what I'm talking about? 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you don't know what to do financially, you do not break forth financially. Do you get the point? Is it clear to us? So, what I'm saying is this. Process gap is a major issue. So, many of us are changing jobs. And we are changing you want to live well. I'm saying to you, changing jobs is not your solution. Understanding finance from scripture is the solution. And living by the principles that is meant to help you financially is the solution to it. And when you get that principle, some of you to take you out of your job to start your own. So be an employee, become an employer. Am I talking to us? Am I talking to us? Some of you, when you are working, you become a partner. That means that you're not just being an employee there, that is no man. You become a partner. I hope that I know that happens in Nigeria. That we become partner. But you must understand the principles that make that happen. Amen. Amen. Because if they tell you, save, 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 there's a biblical dimension to it. Are you with me? Are you with me? Will Lord help us in the name of Jesus? All right. Let me just go to the next one, then I will give you an example, and then we, we, can, we, can, we can close. For example, now, Let me leave that. I don't want to talk about it. Let me do that another time. So the other one is identity. Shut identity. Now, the idea has to do with personality gap. Personality gap. Personality gap. When you don't realize that identity will shape your thoughts, identity will shape your actions, it will shape your outcomes. Are you with me? And many people don't really realize that. So, we have people that have wrong perception of themselves. Low self esteem, for example. Now, we have low self esteem issues, or we have superiority complex. It will affect you. And it also affects issues of habit. People with low self esteem can hardly get things done at the level of excellence. But they don't believe that they are even good enough. Are you with me? Are you with me? So, you need to know who you are. So, you see one thing, people want to do stuff, but who they are is not helping them to do things at a better level. You know, if you don't do something for who you are, it will impact a lot on the outcome. Meaning that you can do, you can form a habit based on doing. And that's what happens a lot of believers. They want to make resolution that, ah, this year, I will not lie. You have a nature that is contrary to lying. Are you to me? If you feed that nature, you will not lie. You don't feel that nature, you shall lie. Hello? Are you with me at all? Are you with me at all? So, that and this is another major, major, major one. And people do not understand it, there is a lot of crisis. So, I'm saying that people have done, try to, there are teachers that are business psychological, that teachers about forming habits from the realm of our soul. And so, they don't last. So people will tell you that next year I will start selling, I mean, I will start selling, let me say, meat pie. Are you with me? Next year is 2024. Abby? Then 2027, you've not started to buy from pan. <laughs> Are you with me? You've not buy something to buy what? There is even no capital to buy what they need to buy. That's a limit by. It was just in the realm of desire. And that is not connected to it. Hello. Hello. You can't study Daniel very well. Daniel 6 will show you that Daniel's prayer life was not flowing from a place of just doing something. It was flowing from who he is as an identity. Are you with me? That means that Daniel is not just praying because, you know, crisis management. People that pray that way. They are looking for children. They pray for children. When they have children, their prayer life goes down. Because their prayer life is connected to crisis. Some is an emergency issue. Something terrible just happened. They gather everybody. They will pray. They will call everybody. Pray for me. Pray for me. Pray for me. Pray for me. And then when the emergency is solved, next six months, no more prayer life. Daniel was not like that. Daniel's prayer habit came out of who he is. Are you with me? Are you with me? 
Am I talking to us? Now, we read this one that says that, you know, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the what? Talk to me now. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the what? What made them sons? Is it being led that made them sons? Or they are sons, so they are led? You get the difference? You get the difference? If you look at what I'm talking about here, they are sons. Many of their sons, they will talk to their father. Am I talking to us? Their father talking back to them. Leads to be led. So the doing is being led. The being is that they are sons. You know what I mean? That's how you say when Jesus was talking about prayer, he taught us our father who in heaven. So sons will always be led, led. But the life of sonship that brings leading is prayer to the father. Am I talking to us? Am I talking to us? But by reading it, you know, people are watching, a lot of want to be led, but they're not becoming sons. Hello? That means not, or let me put it this way. They're not living the lifestyle of a son. Are we together? Hallelujah. You can't wait on God for nine days, for ten days. You ask for God and pray about this. Pastor, I don't know what God is saying. After three days. Okay, go on that three days. I don't know what God is saying. Okay, go on that three days. I don't know what God is saying. Okay, do seven days with fasting. That's already now you. Nine plus seven is what? Sixteen days. Come on. Hey, Pastor, I have one dream. It was a cat. It was running after a dog. <laughs> are, you, are you with me at all? Sons will always be led. Hello? Such in that place means that contextually, your priesthood is strong in prayers, in communion with the Lord. Are you with me? It's there constantly. So it's not because I have fasted that made me to be led. Am I talking to us? If you cannot be led until you fast, you have a problem. Because being led is your inheritance. Am I talking to us? Is what? Knowing the mind of God is part of your inheritance. You are a son. You know, he said that it's not calling them servants. It's not them friends. They are friends who know what is in his heart. But you are a son. Am, am I speaking to us? Am I speaking to us? We demonstrate in the prophetic training. People will come out. It's okay. God give us a word for this person. And right, God will give it. You are not going to fast 10 days, 50 days before that happens. And then you now come and meet me that, Pastor, this is my life. I cannot hear God about that area. I have a problem with you. Something is wrong with your Christian lifestyle. Something is wrong with your discipleship. Something is wrong with your mindset. Am I talking to us? Am I talking to us? It's some people that have, and we cannot use that word to really describe the spiritual very well sometimes. It's not you are from your home that you are your father, you are cat and dog. You don't see eye to eye. A normal home where the children live with their parents. You have access to go and ask them questions, talk to them. Am I talking to us? And parents that are okay will give you answers. When they don't really have answers, they will tell you maybe you should wait. You do something about it. That's the point. Are you with me? Are you with me? You know, when Jesus was also teaching Matthew 7, he was saying that you cannot ask God for the Holy Spirit and he will give you serpent. Amen. So, I'm saying all this to us to understand that we need to understand that you need to know your identity. Shout my identity. Shout identity. It's important to understand who you are. It's very connected to many things when it comes to the issue of habits. Many have a bit that stem me out of a distorted identity, wrong identity. So they have unhealthy habits. Unhealthy what? If somebody is a prince in Yoruba land, ah, I don't like Yoruba land for prince. Let me use some of those other cultures in the East. You know, when you are a prince in those cultures in the East, they start to train you to take over. So they do a lot of oral training for you. You learn the art of war. Am I talking to us? 
You're not learning need to just be a good person that you can fight. You're because you're going to lead people to war. Am I talking to us? They will prepare you with learning languages. You go and read. No, no, I mean, read history. Sometimes they have, they can speak seven languages, eight languages. It's because of international trade. Am I talking to us now? Are, are you with me? To so them learn so many, 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 many things. And usually, they don't allow them to move with commoners. Do you understand? Those first of all, those movies, like the Korean movies, some of them have to disguise into the city to go and be among the commoners. Am I talking to us? Because their way is different because of royalty. Hallelujah. So, already, you will be, have, you have a lifestyle close to being a king in lifestyle. Do we get that? Do we get that? So, in the kingdom as well, your identity is very important. If you understand who you are as a child of God, there are things that will not happen. And if you feel that dimension of life by staying in the world, it will help you to go far. And that's why, if you read Ephesians 6, it was emphasizing, when you see all those let, 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 those let that was said in Ephesians 6 came out of an identity expression. That's, I mean, Ephesians, Ephesians 4. Let me just read that, please. And then I'll, I'll try and tidy it up. Ephesians 4, let me start from verse 17. This I say, therefore, testify in the Lord that you, are no longer, you longer walk as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind. That means now in Christ Jesus, you are not expected to walk like a Gentile in the vanity of their mind. Having the understanding that can be alienated from the life of God through ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their hearts, who have been past feelings, I have given themselves over into licentiousness to walk on cleanness with greediness. But you have not learned Christ. If so be that you have heard him and have been taught by him, get that, heard him, taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus. Do you get this? That means you have a lifestyle that led to you hearing the Lord and you are taught by him. Because the truth or reality is in Jesus. Shall reality is in Jesus. That means that we define as reality that is not of the Lord. Reality is in Jesus. Now, that means that to help you with the proper pursuit, that means that you put off concerning the former way of life, the old man, that is way of life will be born again. The, which is called according to the spirit of lust, renewed in the spirit of your mind, verse 24, and that you put on the new man, shall put on the new man, which is after God is created in righteousness and truliness. Therefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Be angry and say not, let not the sun go down upon your wrath, neither give place to the devil. Let him that stole steal no more. The first thing is identity. First thing is what? Of being a new man. So there's a lifestyle that's not compatible to that identity. Are you getting the point? It's not just letting that stone steal no more. This is for that is identity. That means that the action of stopping stealing should flow forth from what? Talk to me now. From what? You're not talking to me. Oh. From what? Hallelujah. Please come. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So it says again in verse 29, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. Why is he saying that? That there is the issue there. What is there? What is there? So now, if you understand who you are, number one, who you are, you know what your destiny is in Christ Jesus. Are you with me? Those begin to work in the formation of affecting you. You know, for example, now in your destiny, your career is not my career. Is that okay? So what I need to learn in terms of my career to focus on and be committed to it will not be the same as you are going to be committed on. Are you with me? And you must give yourself only to those things. But then, as you relate with people in different expressions of life, your identity in Christ now forms the base of your decisions. Are you getting me? Are you getting me? So what happened is this, like Daniel in Babylon, you become 10 times different because of identity. That means the other people that will be exceptional, that will be good. But you are going to be exceptional beyond them because of your identity. Do you get that point? Do you get that point? In Babylon, there were people that were very good after they went to school with Daniel and the rest. But Daniel and his friends were 10 times better. 
Poate te dezbăta. Poate te dezbăta. And that showed in their lifestyle. When we have chapter 2, chapter 2, there was a problem of king having a dream that he could not remember nor interpret. He needed interpretation and also people to remember the dream. And because of those people limited by the gods of Babylon, they are limited, they said that this cannot come except the God reveal it. I didn't want to say the God. The God that they know cannot reveal it. You get the point? They said that the answer that the king is asking for is with God. But their own God can still not give that answer. Are you getting this point? Are you with me? They said that the answer that the king is looking for, a mortal man cannot give that answer. Only God can give that answer. But the ghost of Babylon cannot provide that answer. Do you understand? Because you know that they named Daniel and his friends after the ghost of Babylon. Are you with me? So, when Daniel called his friends together that they should pray, that cannot be the first time. Hallelujah. That cannot be what? He got answered them. So, it means that when they were in that school, there was a practice of them having solutions from God. Hello. You don't say somebody's sentence is better. The gap is much. Better means that there were people that were good and very good. But they were better. And not just better. They were ten times better. So that's solutions that defy even what they call supernatural. Hello. What is that the gods will give the answer? It's supernatural they are looking up to. But what they call supernatural is lesser and inferior to the dimension of life as God. Do you get that? Do you get that? So what I'm talking about. Now, when I now begin to apply it to different areas, it's major. For example, now, your sleeping habit, if it is wrong, your prayer life will not have weight. Hello? Your Bible study life will not have weight. Taking it into your career, your career will not have weight. Are you with me? People will tell you that when they leave their job, someone say they need time to not go and start a company. I laugh at them. Because when you leave that company, that's your place of work, of work, work, to start your company, if you're a hard-working person, you now realize that there's no time anywhere. There's no what? You have to just plan your time. In the first like five years of that work that you're doing, is to take your time more than where you're coming from. Am I talking to us? So, we need to get ourselves together. If you don't sit down to understand what I'm talking about now, your prayer life will be weak, your Bible study life will be weak, in skills you'll be weak. Hallelujah. You'll be what? Weak. And you must see yourself excelling than others in your area and your field. If you understand it, this will begin to happen to you. It will begin to affect your time. You begin to see yourself that you can do things in God that are not just natural. So I want us to really make up our mind to go and sit down and go and look at this. Now, if you have behavioral patterns that you want to change, it cannot change without understanding what I'm talking about. But you begin to work at it for you to change. You won't get results immediately. Hello, you won't get what? So there'll be the progress gap there. If you don't know how to go about the change, you will not enter the habit that will give you a desired result. Do you get that point? Is that clear to us? And not only identity, that will not help at all. So I want us to see that we need to work on this area of our lives if we are going to go far. If we are going to go far. If we are going to go far. And I repeat it, we need to work on this area of our life. Now, in your place of work, when they want to promote you, what they will look at is your performance. What would they look at? What would they look at? Now, you won't expect me to be your boss and see somebody who is, maybe you are rating you in 10, 1 to 10 in scale, and you led by, you led by, let's say, I mean, your scale, you are 6 points on the scale, and somebody is on 9 points and is a Muslim. You expect me to leave the nine point person who's a Muslim and promote you. 
because you pray in tongues. Because you open your Bible in, in office. We will promote the nine points ahead of you. Do you get that point? So if you want to be promoted, you must understand how your prayer that you are praying, how your Bible that you are reading, connect your skill and make your excellence to be able to come 10 points. Do you get it? Do you get it? A lecturing, you are not promoted for going to class. You are promoted for writing papers. Not just writing papers, publishing them in reputable journals. Not that you are on the Journal of University of Lagos. And you say you are, you are going to be promoted. Nobody is going to promote you. Just like a severe and the rest. Are you with me? Are you with me? So, to you be promoted, you have to write papers and put the reputable journal. So now be a believer. What's your advantage? You know God, you know the word of God. So, like Professor Talana, he will tell you that he will sit down in his office and he will pray in tongues and interpret it. The interpretation is the paper. So, most times, he will send the paper out. It's never rejected. Do you understand? They usually reject papers. Sometimes they can reject the paper and say that they write it again, write it again. But his own, it will go out once. It's not rejected. So, it's not people that became a prof early in life. Are we together? So, because he has an identity. Are you with me? It follows the place of the habit of also writing. But not writing just from brain source. It's writing from a source that is rooted in God. Do you get that? Do you get that? Now, I'm taking this to release this. I want you guys to go and work on your place of wisdom from God's word affecting you in your natural life. Hello? This study of God's word that you say you are studying, how is it impacting your natural life? You're praying to God as a part of your natural life. Hallelujah. In terms of download of wisdom. In terms of what? In terms of what? And I pray you're able to do that by God's person in Jesus' name. Is the message clear to us? Is it clear to us? Now, if you have any habit formation that comes, not for this expression, it will affect you. It will give you that result. You can have what they call the labor of the foolish. The labor of what? So may God help us in the name of Jesus. So what good success, this has to be there. Gospel to Joshua, the habit of staying in the world has to be there. From that, all that is to come that will be an habit in our lives. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Now, if there's someone that you are here, you procrastinate, and that has become an habit. You have to change that. Do you understand? You have to do what? You have someone that give excuses. That means that they bring something your way. The first thing you think of is that, ah, you give an excuse. Or you have a fear of mindset of, I cannot do it. All that has to do what? Has to change. Has to do what?